If you thought some of the What If TV show was pretty crazy, just get ready for this list. With Roof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka The Mad Dog, and we're back with another video. I genuinely believe that What If is one of the most creative series that Marvel Comics has ever printed. It allows fans of old and new to see unique versions of the Marvel Universe that they're just never going to see in the real continuity, such as What If Jane Foster Became Thor? And out there, concepts like What If Spider-Man Joined the Fantastic Four? And my personal favourite that I haven't just dreamed about for the last couple of years, What If Aunt May Had to Create an OnlyFans After Uncle Ben Died? So to celebrate the upcoming TV show, I thought I'd sit down and reminisce about the 15 weirdest what if titles that I've read. Your list is probably going to be different and that's cool but admittedly it's not going to change mine. Number 15 from volume 2 issue 9 I've got what if the x-men died on the first mission. This is one of those titles that when you hear it you think it's going to be pretty straightforward and it's like well the X-Men won't exist. And this isn't really too weird or insane, it's one of the more interesting concepts that I think they've done. A lot of What If tends to take an event from regular Marvel continuity and just flip it around a little bit to give you a different perspective. But the reason why I really like this What If story and that I thought it was weird is because it allowed me to get a bit more insight into the regular X-Men continuity and just how important the X-Men is to Charles Xavier. I can't lie, he does a lot of moping about and crying in this issue and I can't really blame him because, you know, he pretty much sent a bunch of mutant kids to the death. But more than highlighting them as just a superhero team, it focused on the point that this is actually a family. Yeah, yeah, I know, another bold fictional character talking about family because we need another one of those. But if I'm being brutally honest, I think this is one that I prefer the concept of more than the execution. And I think it could have leaned into the style of other titles and been a bit zanier, a bit crazier, and done something a bit more out of the box. We've got a tie at number 14 because it's what if Spider-Man were bitten by a radioactive sheep and what if Wolverine were a wimp? These both featured in issue 100 of volume 2 but unfortunately there isn't really a story to go with this. If there had been it probably would have been much higher up on this list and it's two concepts that I really wish we could have seen. These were pretty much just one shot covers, there was nothing to go with it, there isn't even a writer that's credited with the idea but sometimes what if is just about doing the daftest idea that you can think about so I'm really surprised that they didn't take the bait with this one. For example if Wolverine was a wimp it'd be interesting to see how he would go through the Weapon X project and he also still might not end up with Jean Grey. Number 13, I've got What If Hulk Landed on the Planet That the Illuminati Intended For Him. This is from the What If Special for Planet Hulk and I also really like the original story that's in this. Where it basically became What If Hulk but with the lady that was introduced whose name just eludes me at the moment. But the second story where Hulk lands on this peaceful planet is just really interesting and it's pretty much written like a silent issue. He makes friends with some kind of weird space hippo and he ends up just having quite a good time and becoming some kind of like folk icon. He also realises as well that it's better off to stay in his Hulk form and manages to find that balance between Hulk and Bruce Banner. So it's weird just thinking that if the story had gone the way that the Illuminati had intended, Hulk probably would have been better off. But we wouldn't have been better off because Planet Hulk is such a great event, they even made it quite high into my top 10 list of the Marvel 1 and done omnibuses. Number 12, I've got What If Spider-Man Kept His Six Arms. I think this is one of the first What If issues that I looked for when I was slowly getting into the series because I just think Spider-Man with six arms is such a great concept and an that it's based on Amazing Spider-Man issue 100 and the thing with What If is that I like the stories that tend to go towards the more hypothetical where something from the inception of a team or a character is completely changed or reversed because I think that's where you get the wider ramifications but at the same time I really enjoyed this story. Peter slowly starts to realise that there's actually some benefits to him having all these extra arms like he's got even greater strength and he can punch more people at once but this is also one of those Spider-Man stories where he just keeps doing stuff wrong and things just keep going worse for him like all the greats that have come before it. So first he goes to look for Dr. Connors which just ends up making him transform into the lizard and they have a pretty decent fight. Then he goes to see Mr. Fantastic and in one of the most bizarre sequences that I've read in a good long time, the thing comes in and says, hey Spidey I've got something to tell you. Spider-Man then has a go at him for saying that he doesn't want another lecture about how it's okay to be a monster. Then they get into a fight just for pretty much nothing and then they break it up, shake hands and the thing then goes, no what I was actually going to tell you is that Doc Ock was holding people hostage. Like, who with any kind of urgent message would just stroll in and be like, hey Spidey, I've got a message for you. Just seems like a situation that didn't need to happen, but I'm really glad they did because this was a really enjoyable story. Number 11, I've got What If Thor Battled Conan the Barbarian from Volume 1, Issue 39. As well, I find this weird is because the title of the book is only a couple of pages long. After the first introduction, 
introduced to each other, Thor and Conan actually become friends together, and then Conan talks to him about Krom. Thor then decides to ascend the mountain so that he can encounter him, and he gets into more of a fight with this other god than he did with Conan, which was the title of the book. In all honesty, I would have still been as excited for this book if it was just called What If Thor and Conan the Barbarian Became Best Friends, because that's pretty much the book that we got. And now that Conan is back, and I know he's got some dealings with the Savage Avengers, I do really hope that these characters can come face to face once again. There's been other What If titles that sounded completely crazy that have now come into the mainstream of the universe, so why not this one? As well, even though this is one of the older titles, I think the actual fight between Thor and Conan is really enjoyable. Now yeah, I love the Barbarian, but I can't lie, this does not seem like a fair fight. Actually, with how old Thor is, I'm not sure if this is part of the continuity now, but it'd be very easy to retcon that in. As well, like I said, this is part of the first volume of What If, which is currently being released in two different omnibuses, which you can already pre-order from the channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services, so why not treat yourself to this book, because I'm not gonna say this for everybody who watches this video, but you personally, you deserve it. So what if you did buy the two What If volumes, and also what if you use code WOOF WOOF for $2 off your order at the checkout? Well fortunately for you, this is part of the regular continuity, and you can use that code as many times as you like. Number 10 from Volume 2, Issue 83, it's What If Daredevil Was A Disciple Of Doctor Strange? This one is the combination of a great concept and also a pretty decent execution because it really went in a direction that I didn't expect. Doctor Strange doesn't act as the same Sorcerer Supreme that we all know and love, and he's more of a martial arts sensei. Electra's also got a massive part in this, but the reason why I really love this story was for that really cool Daredevil costume. It's so 90s that I'm expecting it to be called the Rad Edition, but if a Marvel Legends figure of this came out, I would jump on that day one. But there's also just a really interesting story in here, and you get to see Daredevil operating as his own agent. There's a betrayal, there's a triple agent in it, and I just think that this is a really fascinating story. And this is actually one of those what-if concepts that I would have liked to have spent a bit more time with. Number 9, again from Volume 2, because it's Issue 18, which is, what if the Fantastic Four battled Doctor Doom before they had the powers? Again, you think this would be another situation similar to what if the X-Men died on the first mission and you'd be like, or nothing had happened. But there's actually quite a fascinating thing that goes on in this book that it shows you why the Fantastic Four are great, even without the powers. Even if he wasn't Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards is still one of the smartest people that's ever lived. And Ben Grimm is still a loyal friend that's got quite a bit of strength behind him. Johnny's also a bit younger than usual, which isn't something that I really cared for, and I can't really remember too much that Sue Storm did in this title. But still, this is one of those titles that I thought was going to be really short-lived, and they were just all going to die pretty much as soon as the issue started. But the Fantastic Four still find a way to overcome Doctor Doom and save the day, and it also ends with Doctor Doom acknowledging that Reed Richards is his intellectual superior. Which I can't lie, I wish somebody would say that to me. But I think this one is great because we've seen so many different stories where a superhero gets their power taken away from them, and then they have to figure out a way to overcome that, but this is different because he never had the powers in the first place. But this just shows at the core, these were good people from the beginning. Number 8, from issue 51 of volume 2, we've got What If The Punisher Became Captain America? Now this sounds like a great concept, and because of the fact that a lot of people have been Captain America, it really wouldn't surprise me if Frank Castle would end up wielding the shield. It is a little disappointing to say this, but you don't get to see a lot of him operating as Captain America, but it's still an interesting story to read. But the funniest thing about this what if issue is that Frank Castle can't help ending up becoming the Punisher. It's just something he needs to do, I think we only really see him in the Stars and Stripes for about one page. And it's great how they show you the reaction of the other Avengers, and how they just don't accept him. But like I said, this was a what if concept that pretty much ended up being the exact same story that happens in the real universe because of the fact that we just end up with the Punisher. Number 7, we've got What If Professor Xavier Became the Juggernaut from Volume 2, Issue 13. Now this is one of those great what if issues because it's just got a batshit crazy concept and it does it in the most batshit crazy execution that's possible. So having been buried alive, Charles Xavier goes a bit crazy and emerges as a juggernaut and pretty much takes out every single other Marvel team that exists. Because he's still got his telepathy, but now he's got the benefit of being unstoppable, it does raise a question that was the wheelchair the best thing that happened to Xavier? That's one of those questions that sounded reasonable in my head, but now that I've said it out loud, I kind of feel like a monster. Which is true because we know that the Kane version of Juggernaut is often quite insane, and to see Charles fall victim to the same thing is just really fascinating. He also ends up trying to take over the world, and he says that he's not going to become a dictator, which... 
Can't lie, most dictators end up sane, but you see the rise of mutants and how the original X-Men end up turning against Xavier and working with Magneto, and I think it just shows a lot about the dynamics of this team that we often take for granted when we're reading the main continuity. Number 6 from Volume 3, I've got What If Doctor Doom Became The Thing? Again, this sounds like one of those titles where you're just like, that makes no sense, there wouldn't really be a story behind it. But because Victor Von Doom and Reed Richards became friends earlier on, Reed realised that he didn't need Ben Grimm going on the ship when he was going into space. As a result of this, Reed, Johnny and Sue still get the powers but at the same time Doctor Doom turns into the Thing. He becomes resentful of Reed and pretty much still becomes the Doctor Doom that we all know already but just looking like the Thing. In his revenge he then sets off a gamma bomb which Ben Grimm ends up falling victim to and becomes the Hulk. So it near enough becomes like the Nicolas Cage film Face Off because you've got a Hulk vs Thing battle but the other way round. And after that the Fantastic Four move forward but with the Hulk as the fourth member. I just thought this was really fun and it was one of those what if issues that really balances being completely stupid but still tells you a coherent and enjoyable story. Coming in at number 5 from volume 1 we've got issue 26 which is what if Captain America was elected president. This is one of those stories that goes from 0 to 100 at pretty much the turn of a page. The concept itself already sounds quite interesting and I think it's probably more interesting now that we live in the world that we do. Because of the fact that celebrities can run for president and I'm not trying to get political or anything like that, it's just that I can see parallels between this in the world that we live in today, which doesn't so much explore the political side of it, but how Captain America ends up letting his guard down. There's a great plot with the Red Skull, and it has quite a somber ending, but the reason why I really love this one is because it still allows you to see a bit of the wider world. There's just a couple of panels where Spider-Man goes and pretty much harasses J. Jonah Jameson and says that he needs to start being nice to him just in case he becomes Vice President. And these are the what-if stories that I really like, where they understand how other characters would react to this situation. So just having those couple of pages really tickled me and I think that's what solidified this as a great what if story. Number 4 from volume 2 issue 71 I've got what if the gamma bomb spawned a thousand hulks. When I first heard this title I thought it'd be similar to that time when someone spawned a thousand death claws in Fallout 4 and in this list I've tried to not include titles that have pretty much happened in the main universe kind of like when Jane Foster became Thor but you can sort of argue that a similar situation to this did happen in Old Man Logan but in a weird way Bruce Banner gets the respect of the planet because of the fact that he isn't the only monster that exists. He's still got his intelligence so he is able to understand exactly how they can overcome the Hulks and in all honesty it's just fun seeing all of these take over the planet like this could technically be called Planet Hulk but I like that they really managed to exploit one of the biggest problems in the Marvel Universe and that's the fact that near enough everybody exists in New York so all the Hulks do is go straight away to New York and they manage to take on the majority of the superheroes that exist. I like that it still manages to poke fun at some of the plot holes of the universe and that's why I really enjoyed this title. Number 3 we've got what if Wolverine became the Lord of the Vampires from volume 2 issue 24. Yeah that title alone is a bit of a mad one and it delivers in its execution as well. So you have the majority of the X-Men team being bitten and turned into vampires but Wolverine being the madman that he is still takes on Dracula. He beheads him and then takes over all of the vampires and has the ability to turn into an actual Wolverine but it's from there where the story really goes crazy because I believe this was based on an actual issue with the X-Men that I haven't really read just yet and Doctor Strange has quite a big part in this but as Wolverine's army is rising Doctor Strange is taken out of the picture so his spirit then locates the one person that they feel is fit enough to take on an army of vampires and it's the Punisher, not Blade, the actual vampire hunter, but Frank Castle. I'm not gonna lie, it's still cool seeing the Punisher with Doctor Strange's cape and just shooting a load of vampires, but I do feel like they did a complete left turn where they could have just included Blade. I really love Frank's attitude as well when the spirit of Doctor Strange is talking to him, and he just takes it in his stride. And without a moment's hesitation, he just decides to start shooting everything. This was just one of those really fun quirky titles that I think just shows you that Wolverine will pretty much be the same character no matter what happens to him. Number two, and I'm cheating a bit on this one because I've got pretty much every what if this character killed this character. As what if has been going on for decades, there's so many different ones of these and I can't really separate a lot of them. You've got what if Punisher killed Daredevil, what if Punisher killed Spider-Man, what if Daredevil killed Kingpin. And there's quite a vast number of these that have shown up throughout the years and they're all really interesting. As well I'm going to include Punisher Kills the Marvel Universe and Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe because they pretty much are what if titles. And as well I have to give a shout out to my friend Hunger Club Clothing because he sent me this amazing Deadpool t-shirt.
appreciate. But yeah, because of the fact that a death of a major character in the Marvel Universe doesn't really seem to happen or really last that long if it does, having What If explore some of those situations allows us to really see what it would be like if death was a permanent consequence. Number one, and just the weirdest concept to me, and also the weirdest execution that I've seen in a What If titles from the ones that I've read, is going to be Volume 1, Issue 11, and what if the original Marvel bullpen became the Fantastic Four? Just seeing Stan Lee as Mr. Fantastic and Jack Kirby as the Thing is enough to put this at number one. What if has always been about crazy concepts, but to bring people from the outside world to overtake one of the biggest teams within the Marvel Universe just weird. I also really just like the explanation for how they got the powers and that something was just delivered to the office. It almost felt like they were just trying to do the silliest thing that they could do with this issue and it really works. And I think this also works as a counterpoint to what I just said about what if the Fantastic Four took on Doctor Doom before they had the powers. And that this brings into question, can anybody pretty much be heroic if it is that they've got powers? I had such a good time reading this one, it was so meta but enjoyable at the same time and I think this highlights why what if is such a great series. I'm really hoping that the Disney Plus show does the same, but like I said, this is my list. I haven't read every single What If title that's ever been released. So I do want to know in the comments section below, what are some of the most bizarre What If stories that you've read? If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, why did you get this far? Definitely subscribe if you're new here and do your boy a favor and share this video where you can. Feel free to check out one of my other videos, but until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, stay reading the best books that you can find, and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof! See you at the next video.